Hello, welcome to another video. Outside again today because uh, it is a lovely sunny day today. You don't get many of these in the UK, so uh, I thought I'd make the most of it. Plus it gives me a chance to use my new DJI mic um, outside in the wind with my new little dead cat. Um, and I'm actually doing a little backup recording as well, so just in case. In the last video I did refer to the pick line being connected uh, as part of my sort of next stage of, of, of preparation for treatment. Um, now the pick line is put in after a series of tests, so you have a, sort of a MRSA test and a COVID test and a few other tests just to make sure that you're, you're okay and you're sort of healthy to have it inserted. That probably takes about an hour or something like that at the hospital. The following day you then go in for the pick insertion, which is a, a small procedure, I did allude to it in the previous video, uh, which basically just inserts it into a deep vein in your arm. Now what I'm going to do now is, obviously that was all the preparation for it, then they did it and this is what it looks like. So uh, yeah, this tube here goes into a deep vein in here which they locate by ultrasound and um, then they feed this through under the end of the vein, it goes over here and it sort of sits about here just above your, in a vein just above your heart. At the end of this, which is obviously wrapped up for, for hygiene and to keep it all clean, there's a very big risk of infection with these. This is um, where the, the lumen is, there's like a toggle, and then they connect various things to that um, during the chemo. So yesterday I had my first chemo treatment, it lasted about four or five hours altogether. Um, so they do some bloods first and then they weigh you and do all the necessary sort of pre-checks. Probably takes about half an hour or something for that, an hour maybe at the most. Uh, and then after that, you um, uh, you just start with your chemo. They hook you up to the to the uh, to the toggle on the end of this with the various drugs. Um, some obviously some of the chemo drugs are not first. You have like a pre-med first, which is uh, usually um, water, let's say saline solution, and so on. Um, some of the uh, other drugs as well, and then then they issue the, the chemo, which takes about, I think mine was about two hours or two and a half hours. Then after that, once you've sort of had all that and you've, 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 you've been sort of ticked off and they're happy with it, they redress this and, and then you're sent home with another drug, which is why you have this fitted mainly uh, for the type of chemo I'm having. I'm only going to take this out briefly because it doesn't like being in UV light. Um, but this is my second chemo th treatment which is in a, a bottle and so this is the uh, Fluorora Rorosil um, now that is sort of in a pouch and what I've done is I've used a I don't really know a current phrase for this but when I was a kid growing up these were called bum bags I think Americans call them fanny packs or something like that um, so depending upon where you are in the world it's one or the other but I'll show you that um, I'll have to just lower the camera down yeah so I've managed to put a bum bag on and just not use any of the other patches but it just so happens there's this sort of water bottle holder here um, and that has been ideal because it's, it's obviously covered in black fabric and that means that um, it keeps the lice away so if I do have to go out um, it's going to keep the light away from it obviously I can cover it up as well um, but it's not in the way and there's plenty of play with the tube that's going obviously going up here uh, up to my arm where we showed you before so there's a, there's a good um, you know there's a good couple of feet there to play with and this just doesn't get in the way uh, so it's quite handy there you go yeah so it, it, it's working out quite well and so far I didn't have any reaction to the chemo when I was being treated um, I felt a little bit strange yesterday but <laughs> Uh, it's difficult because you've got to monitor yourself for, for things like infection so you have to monitor your temperature so get yourself I got myself one of those sort of uh, brawn sort of in-ear ones I think they're about 20 quid or 25 pounds on Amazon I'll put a picture of it on the, on the screen uh, in a minute but basically that's the one I had um, it's best to get a decent one I think because you want accurate temperature but anything over 37 and a half degrees you could have an infection and there's obviously some of the there's a leaflet which you get which tells you exactly what to look for but basically if you feel unwell shivery um, and so on we've been sick and you know wanting uh, and obviously if this temperature is high then there's an emergency number for the chemo unit uh, which you phone and obviously they'll, they'll give you the advice on what, what you need to do and it may well be that you have to go in 
and for them to assess you and maybe give you some fluids or some other, um, if you've got an infection, then clearly I might have to start giving you some antibiotics. But the key thing is, is to act quickly with that because it can be quite serious. Um, but so far, so good. Um, my armour, you might have noticed, was a bit red. Um, what I find is that when they clean this, they change the dressing, they use a very, very really strong alcohol to, to obviously kill all the germs, a sort of nuke it almost, I suppose you'd call it. Um, and that does tend to react a little bit with my skin. Um, but then I, uh, you know, um, I'm not that I've got oversensitive skin, but I think it's just one of those things that, but it's not something that I'm b bothering me. It's just, it just feels a little bit, it's like I'm sort of a little bit irritated, I guess, like a bit of a, like a heat rash, I suppose you'd, you'd, you'd say. Um, it's quite windy out here today. I, sort of whipping around a bit and hope my uh hope my dead cat's uh, doing a good job um anyway so that's it so so far so good that's my first chemo out of the way um got to go back um on wednesday so today's tuesday go back on wednesday so i have it monday and keep the bottle overnight all day tuesday wednesday afternoon i go back um that will be gone by then that'll all be used up they'll double check it they'll disconnect me make sure this is still clean and and so on and then they'll send me on my way i think that takes what i was told on monday probably takes about 20 minutes half an hour to do that bit um yeah so as i say i'll go back just connect this and uh hopefully um you know uh, that'll be the end of it and then it's just how i feel then um prior to the next treatment so obviously I'm sort of a week on them so it's every other monday basically so it's every two weeks then so i'll start it all over again so that's one down pretty much apart from taking this bottle back uh, so one down and 11 to go so uh, it's more progress <laughs> um i'm still plodding on with my puzzle i haven't filmed any of it yet but i will do uh and my meccano again is a little bit making a little bit of difference with that so um i'm trying to sort of take my time with it because if I sort of suppose if I sat down for four or five hours on each one I'd probably finish them but I like to do sort of 20 minutes here and 20 minutes there but I will do a little bit of uh, filming of the progress I might do a bit of a time lapse of me searching for puzzle pieces or something <laughs> um yeah so there you go um well that's it I think obviously what you have to bear in mind I don't know how people will end up watching this video it is going out like, as a public video on YouTube at the time of making this one, no one's actually watched one. But then again, I'm not really promoting it. Um, I probably should have a bit of a campaign on Twitter and, or pay for some promotion or, I don't know, tell my friends I've made them because I, I haven't really done that. But, um, uh, but one of the things that you have to bear in mind is that if you happen to be watching this, um, if you get anything out of the videos, then absolutely, that's absolutely great. For me, to some degree, this is just a diary of how I've sort of felt about it and cope with it and so uh, with a bit of luck this is something I can look back on in about I don't know, 20 years time or something like that and go oh <laughs> that's what I was doing 20 years ago so you know it's just a little bit of a, um, a future trip down memory lane for me um, so but anyway so at the end of the day I'm not looking for um, you know millions of views and uh, you know uh, thousands and thousands of subscribers so it'd be nice but you know i'm certainly not expecting that anyway we'll leave it at that for now i think um hopefully the sun hasn't ruined my exposure in this one I, the last one i did at the beginning i was trying to film in the shade here and it just happened to clip the top of the and i didn't quite realize it was going to move so quickly so it sort of kind of ruined my introduction video, <laughs> video a little bit but uh, anyway Okay, right, well thanks for watching and I will see you in the very next video. Bye for now. So, oh, I'm competing with the jet now. We're reasonably close to an airport here and sit <laughs> When the pandemic was on, of course, you was not, never heard a plane. Um, you never heard a plane at all um, for, for, for obviously for, for 18 months. Uh, but now they, they do come over uh, fairly regularly. <laughs>